What's going on, church fam? It's Church Life bringing y'all another video. I pray y'all are having a blessed day. So, when you begin a new journey in life, you might start off with a lot of people by your side. But as you continue on, you're going to start to realize that the circle of people that you started off with is beginning to grow smaller. And this happens whenever you try to do something different. Whenever you want to make a change in your lifestyle. Because you're starting to become more spiritually mature. You want to let go of certain habits. You want to let go of certain stuff that you once did. See, one thing I learned in life is this, y'all. When you're going through a struggle in life, that's what's going to reveal who's really there for you. Point blank period, y'all. Because I promise you, People like to stick around when everything is going good. But let you get to a place of struggle, hardship, ready to change. But by you doing this, the stuff that used to keep you up is no longer there because you're letting it go. And what happens is when you begin to step into the newness of life, your life will start to feel like it's falling apart. And that's because God is not allowing what's old to enter. New wine can't be put into old bottle. So when you start to break down and it feel like your life becoming chaotic and you enter into some sort of struggle because you got to learn how to live again when you start letting stuff go that was a part of a habit, people will begin to walk out of your life. As if they never knew you. They start to look at you strange. They start to talk to you funny. <laughs> but that's okay. Because that's God revealing the enemy's hand before the come up. And that's God removing people that didn't help you up when you was down. But when you start to go up, those same people that didn't help you up when you was down, going to try to come back around. They're going to start saying stuff like, I always knew you was going to do it. I always knew your life was going to become something. But they wasn't saying that when you was at the bottom. See, when you're traveling down the right path, the less company you will have. Because when times began to get harder and that straight path slowly becomes a hill that you have to walk up, in order to reach a better life. That's what's going to test the will of your faith, patience, dedication, love, endurance. And by not giving up, you will grow stronger with each step you decide to take. But some people aren't willing to go through those trials and tribulations. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Some people aren't willing to live in the 23rd Psalm. And that's just what it is. So what he say, God will prepare a table in the presence of my enemies. See, that table is filled with every single thing you trusted the Heavenly Father with. And they got to look at this table. Because they only come around when you're winning. But if they see what's on that table. They recognize, wow, I gave up in this area of your life. Wow, I didn't help you up when you was down over here. Wow, I turned my back on you in the most critical time of your life. That's why the words say in Psalm 23, verse 5 through 6, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. That's the stuff you didn't give up on. That's the stuff you endured as you walked through these valleys because you trusted the Heavenly Father. You knew he would make a way for you. And then the word continues on to say this, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. See, this journey is preparing you for what's ahead. Because God said in the scripture, 
through Lord Jesus, he will give us an expected end, hope, and a future. So trust God to the T. His plan will prevail in your life. The reason why we need these type of challenges to happen in our lives is so we can be set apart from the stuff that hold us back. In other words, a lot of times people aren't willing to go the distance. So they become distractions because they're not willing to put in the work as you did. They're not willing to have faith as you did. They're not willing to love God as you did because they're not willing to let go of stuff that separates them from God. That's why when you look around and you notice that the people that started off with you are no longer there is because they couldn't handle the pain that you had to suffer through to be where you're at now. See, we got to go through something because God is developing a testimony from within our lives. And with that same testimony, we bring glory to the Heavenly Father's name. And he will also use that to bless our lives. That's how doors begin to open. Some people need to hear your story. So when God opened that door for you, you can glorify his name. Let people know who got you this far. That's another reason why people start to vanish out of, out of our lives when we go through hardship. Because God don't want it to be no mistake. It was him that led you through the valley of the shadow of death. It was him that brought you out of the land of familiar. It was him that transformed your life. Make no mistake. It was the way maker himself. Through Lord Jesus Christ. Through our faith. Our perseverance. Our endurance. See we endured the temptation. We wanted to leave the path. But we stayed on the path. Because God showed you time and time again. He will make a way. Some people give up too soon. Some people will give up on you too soon. Because they feel like they know your background. They feel like what you've been through was going to be the thing that hinders your future. But God used that to show you faith of a mustard seed is enough to move a mountain when you trust his plan. God got you. That's basically what I'm trying to say. See, when you're chosen by God, sometimes he'll bring you the stuff that only you can pass through and nobody else. Because he's separating you from the former way of living. The old skin has to be shed off. So you can find new identity in Christ. And this process will require you to let some people go. Everybody can't travel with you. The company will begin to grow smaller when you begin this new journey. And there's some people that will stick with you. So I want to end by saying this. Will you stay true to the process or will you give up on the way up? And that's real. Who's going to stay with you in isolation? Who's going to travel up this steep hill so that you make it to the other side and see that God has already prepared a new life for you? Who's going to be around when times get critical, when food gets scarce? When you can't provide, when you're going through the worst time of your life, who's going to be there? It's called long suffering for a reason, y'all. Especially when God is changing us for the better. See, the power of loneliness is very vital. Because when people start to disappear out of your life, that's when you find out who you are as a person. That's how you find out your weaknesses, your strengths. That's how you learn how to trust God. That's how you learn how to have faith. That's how you learn how to have the love of God in your heart. Because when you are alone, you have to think about your actions before you make a final decision. But when you're around the wrong influence, you're more likely to do the wrong thing. And we all have fell victim of that. So... I'm basically just explaining the power of loneliness, why God isolates his chosen. It's going to be people that disappear, but it's for the better. Sometimes you got to let people go and what's really meant for you, it, it will probably come back to you in a later time of your life. 
But you got to trust the process, <laughs> as you always hear. But, uh, yeah, this is the power of loneliness. Sometimes we're going to feel alone in the season of isolation, but we just got to trust God. I pray this word bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. I love y'all.